but we're just taking a left turn on how uh, we explain, let's say, the whole story behind it. We give a different viewpoint. Uh, almost like uh, what Bowie used to do with lyrics. He'd be writing, uh, uh, singing a, a song to you from one perspective, and then another bridge or another verse comes, and he sings it from some other person's perspective that's in the story, you know, and then gets back to it. And it seems a little jarring at first, but then what it really does is add depth to the, to the final product. Sometimes it can be simple. Uh, once again, if, you, if you're improvising, um, let's say, a, more of a bluesy kind of a thing. If I'm just using like a C blues scale. So I'm, right there, I'm going from using minor thirds to, to the major third. And I could probably, if I wanted to get adventurous, there I'm just sort of very quickly running through using the, the major third, the flat nine, the flat five there, but landing on something that's a little bit more familiar, the major six, and then maybe ending on a root like that. Now, I was taught in school that the brain remembers 11 notes and uh, that if you want to go outside, you can go outside, but by the time you get to the, the 11th tone, if you want people to feel like you're still in, you got to make sure that note's in. And if you go beyond that, then people basically receive it as, that guy's out, he's playing out, you know what I mean? So that's something you can kind of play with. Uh, again, if you, your structure is minor pentatonic, but you want to just try something... brought up this rhythm section that if you start to go well that's playing it would just sound awful right. but if you're if you're in B and it's uh, it's more of a and it's got a sort of things that remind you of pentatonic blues rock that you can almost play anything and even if the progression is You can start with a you know what I mean and it would still go with it in other words the scale doesn't necessarily have to match up with the chord progression you know what I mean but but yeah others if you're going I mean that's totally different it's a different style of music and so it, it's less accepting of uh, you opening those little doors that you talked about and, and right. adding uh, the extra notes, the blue notes, the scary notes. <laughs> but yeah, Blackmore was one of those guys that would, when you least expect it, you know, over sort of a pedal point groove, yeah. And between him and John Lord, they would be tossing back exotic scales and, well, and Phrygian, Phrygian dominant and blues and, you know, somewhere in between the, the root and the fifth, there'd be a couple of different kinds of thirds in there. <laughs> yeah. Almost minor, minor, almost major, major, on the way to the fourth and the fifth and in between, you know. And right. you could do the, uh, you know, and that's the... And it just becomes expression right. more, more than scale. <laughs> Which is great. I think that it, in, at the right moment, it liberates the listener's experience. And uh, I, I believe that when somebody's worked out a piece of music and they stay with the scale, that they're more in danger of having, of turning the audience off uh, because they think that it's technical, it's overly technical. And uh, that when the structure between the riff and the harmony and the melody and the improv is a little bit more accepting, that for some reason they think it's less technical. Right. Now, you and I know it's equally technical. Right. There's actually no difference between you know, being loose or being tight melodically or with an improvisation uh, when it comes to picking or sliding or any of that. It's still technique. But the audience hears it in a completely different way. And I think that's the emotional impact that uh, comes from strict adherence to harmony versus a more liberal adherence to harmony and how you can improvise over it. It is important to learn all the modes 
in every key all over your guitar. That's a big order, you know. Uh, but in order to be free with that information, technically, um, you have to get past that memorization stage. You have to get past the visualization stage. And then you have to get past the, the whole concept of why uh, you'd want to recognize a modal position that you're in and then how you would react to it. Again, if we have a, someone says, I've got this riff. And they say, I just need a little melodic thing on top of that. And so at some point you'd have to say, well, what is that? You know, it's this little F sharp power chord kind of thing. Then it goes to this E minor seven. And you'd say, well, what key is that? You know, and, and so you have to be, can you go from, from, can you say, what are those notes? Can you recognize what chords they represent? And then the next step is, what key do those chords belong to? Are they in the same key, or is it a shift of key when the chord shift? And then if you add up the notes, you'd say, well, there's, there's just a little ambiguity there because there's no third being expressed. So that means that's mine to play with. So is it... Or is it... Uh, right? <laughs> and so that's the kind of thing that I would do. And I might sit there and if I was writing that and play that a million times and try to figure out, do I want the... Phrygian dominant version, or do I want the, the Phrygian more of a bluesier sound? So, because I, I could go, or, <laughs> and the, the way, how do you answer that? You say, well, how do I feel about it? What's the story I'm trying to tell? Or, what do I want the audience to imagine, you know? Is this about a guy floating down the, uh, the Mississippi Delta or, uh, or the Nile, right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> that's the kind of thing, you know, like in a G3 jam, that's what you hear, is where we might arrive at a spot in a Hendrix song where the riff is um, sort of open and someone does Dorian, the next guy goes Phrygian Dominant, the next guy plays with his teeth, the other guy just makes a noise, and the other guy brings out a power drill, and then, you know, and it keeps going back, and you can see the depth of the musicality of each player by how they're uh, sort of playing around with this, uh, um, this opportunity that uh, presents itself. And um, the, as I, I used to tell my students, the fewer the notes in the chords, the more freedom you have melodically when it comes to melody and, and improvisation. And the more it's sewn up, the, you know, you start to get limited in how you can get outside of that without running the risk of people thinking you're just playing out for the effect of it.